the history of Captain Marvel is kind of a mess. Lots of legal issues, lots of copyright shenanigans, and even more failed characters under that name. Yes, I know everyone's already talked about this, but that was back when Captain Marvel came out and this one is to mark the release of Shazam, or more likely Avengers Endgame, so it's totally different or something. Plus, these things tend to focus on the legal issues and the major captains, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper than that. So let's go back to the beginning and see if we can untangle this yarn ball of a cannon. Welcome to Cannonball. Captain Marvel's history goes back to 1939. Bill Parker and C.C. Beck created the character for Fawcett Comics who wanted a character to rival Superman, but they needed some kind of hook to make their character even more popular than the one he was competing with. And since comics were aimed at children, their solution was to make the hero's alter ego not Miles managed reporter Clark Kent, but actual child Billy Batson who transforms with the utterance of the word Shazam into the body of an adult. Shazam is both the name of the wizard who gave him his powers and an acronym him for the legendary figures he gains power from, Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles and Mercury. He is joined by the Marvel family, other heroic characters that receive the same powers. The two most prominent are Billy's twin sister Mary Batson who becomes Mary Marvel, and a crippled kid named Freddie Freeman with whom Billy shares his powers to save his life, turning him into Captain Marvel Jr. Needless to say, the character was a huge hit, which then made him a huge target. See, the good Captain was actually more popular than Superman during the 40s, even beating Supes to a live action serial. And so National Comics sued Fawcett over this blatant ripoff, which, coupled with the waning popularity of superhero comics after the war, led to Captain Marvel's adventures coming to an end in 1953. In 1966, with superhero comics back in vogue and with the Captain Marvel trademark expired and up for grabs, another company would snatch up the name and make a new Captain Marvel for the Silver Age. MF Enterprises' Roger Winkle, who was an alien robot that could separate his arms and legs by shouting split like one of those very specific action figures from the 90s. You know the ones. Basically, all of his enemies had the names of existing comic characters and with only four issues under his belt, he disappeared into obscurity where he fucking belongs. In 67, Marvel Comics also took note of the expiration because apparently MF Enterprises didn't actually take the trademark and thus Marvel took the name for themselves. They introduced a hero by that name under Stan Lee and Gene Colan. This character is Marvel, a captain of the recently introduced alien race, the Kree. It's a fairly standard story of an invader turning traitor to defend a less powerful race like Dances with Wolves or Devil May Cry. His hero name comes from the civilians mishearing Captain Marvel as Captain Marvel and believing him to be a new superhero based on his costume and name. Thus, he became that. Later on, he had a brief run where he was trapped in the negative zone and could only escape by temporarily switching places with Hulk sidekick Rick Jones, which was a weird little nod to Billy, but it didn't last too long. Speaking of Billy, National, now going by DC Comics, licensed the rights to the Fawcett character for their comics. The Captain officially became a DC publication in February 1973's Shazam, the original Captain Marvel number one, before Marvel forced them to change the subtitle to The World's Mightiest Mortal. It was some absolute real Ghostbusters shenanigans going on. DC were allowed to use the Captain Marvel name in the comics themselves, but they couldn't sell anything under that name, so all comics and merchandise would use the Shazam label. The Fawcett universe of Earth-S merged with the main DCU in 1985's Crisis on Infinite Earths, and has remained a part of it ever since, as DC owned the full rights to the characters by 1991. The next big change for Billy happened with the 2011 New 52 reboot, which saw him adopt the name of Shazam as his hero persona. Right before that, the Flashpoint universe had him use the name Captain Thunder, which was one of the original proposed names for the character, and I have to wonder if that was DC doing a test run with the name for the New 52 before settling on the much more iconic Shazam. Back with Marvel, Marvel was liked well enough, but he wasn't nearly as popular as Fawcett's Captain and sales started to fall. Even an updated look and a run as the protector of the universe didn't help matters much, so Marvel opted to try something different. The 1982 graphic novel The Death of Captain Marvel saw Marvel die of radiation-induced cancer and was probably the most popular story to ever come from the character's existence. That same year, Roger Stern and John Romita Jr. introduced a new Captain Marvel named Monica Rambeau, a police lieutenant from New Orleans with the power to transform into any type of energy. She's probably at the height of her fame now with her supporting role in the Captain Marvel movie and, no doubt, further expanded role in the future of the MCU but she actually led the Avengers for a while from 1987 to 88. And considering she was a black woman, it's pretty impressive that they gave her such a major role back then. During a brief retirement, a third Captain Marvel was introduced, so Monica took on the names Photon, Pulsar, and currently Spectrum. 
she's appeared as recently as 2017's Ultimates 2, but you should expect her to pop up some more now that the normies have heard of her. In 1993's Silver Surfer Annual No. 6, the aforementioned third Captain Marvel debuted, Genus Vell, son of Marvel. Known then as Legacy, he would take on the Captain Mantle in December 1995 with the launch of his solo series. Admit it, you've never even heard of this guy, right? Not surprising, given that his solo book ended after only six issues, with the remaining six being summarised in the next Captain Marvel book five years later. This book lasted two years before being relaunched and then being cancelled due to low sales two years after. After that. He used the name Photon as a member of the new Thunderbolts from 2004 to 2005, where he was killed off by Baron Zemo and no one cared enough to bring him back. In issue 16 of the 2002 series, Genus' sister Philavel was introduced as an anomaly created when Genus destroyed and recreated the universe. She cured her brother's insanity and became the new Quasar after the Annihilation event. She then joined the Guardians of the Galaxy's 2008 team, which was the basis for the MCU version. Under the name Marta, she was suddenly killed by Thanos in 2010 and has made a couple of cameos in the afterlife since. Her time as Captain Marvel was very brief. In 1996, the Marvel and DC universes briefly merged into the Amalgam universe, seeing numerous characters becoming fused with their counterparts. Naturally, this led to Billy fusing with Marvel into Captain Marvel. By exclaiming the word Kree, Billy Marvel transformed into a superpowered adult and joins the Justice League Avengers. He has all the shared powers between the two, but none of the more unique ones, making him kind of worthless, really. March 2007 saw Marvel return in Civil War: The Return. However, he was later revealed as a Skrull sleeper agent named. Knur, I think, in the 2008 event Secret Invasion. Like the other Skrulls posing as heroes, he was supposed to revert to his true persona when the scheme went into motion, but the botched conditioning led to his real personality being wiped and leaving only Marvels. He thus rebelled against the Skrulls in a really nice parallel with the real Marvels rebellion against the Kree. He was mortally wounded by Super Skrull and passed the mantle on to Marvel's sixth Captain Marvel. Nova started out as the protagonist of the Marvel Boy comic from 2000 under Grant Morrison and J.G. Jones. He was the sole survivor of a Kree ship from another universe and declared war on humanity after being taken captive by S.H.I.E.L.D. After Secret Invasion, he joined Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers team as Captain Marvel before later working to disrupt Osborn's plans. By April 2010, he'd switched to the name Protector, leaving the Captain Mantle open once again. As you can see, keeping a character in the role was a major problem for Marvel. Some of them might have been popular, but they didn't necessarily suit the role, and most of them lacked longevity as characters. And this was a huge issue, since Marvel had to keep producing material under the Captain Marvel name, or they'd lose the copyright, and there was no way they'd ever get it back if DC got their hands on it. But what could they do when the only two things of note about Marvel's Captain Marvel were the death of Captain Marvel, and the fact that there was a fairly popular spin-off character named Ms. Marvel? Ms. Marvel was Carol Danvers, a supporting character and love interest from Marvel's early days. She was badly injured when a Kree device detonated near her in Captain Marvel No. 1. Almost a decade later, she resurfaced with Kree powers in Ms. Marvel No. 1 from 1977. She joined the Avengers soon after, up until the infamous Avengers No. 200 were, long story short, an alien telepath named Marcus had brainwashed Carol into having sex with him to get her pregnant with himself so he could use her as a transport to escape his dimension and then she left with him totally in love. Once it was pointed out that this was more than a little rapey, Chris Claremont was able to bring her back the following year, having her lose her powers to Rogue and telling the Avengers to get fucks for not helping her. She was then experimented on by another alien race, the Brood, granting her cosmic powers as binary in 1982's Uncanny X-Men number 164. In 1992, she lost her binary powers other than scaled down energy manipulation and regained her old powers too. She finally rejoined the Avengers in 98, as Warbird, sporting her most iconic costume. Following her role as a major player in the pro-registration side of Civil War, and a brief time as Captain Marvel in the alternate House of M timeline, Carol's next big development came in July 2012, when someone at Marvel finally got a clue and decided to give the mantle to their already popular spin-off character, thus making Carol their seventh and current Captain Marvel. Unfortunately, her time in the role has been fraught with controversy, even outside of the movie's influence. From a horrendous bout of character assassination in Civil War II that only Tony Stark could relate to, to a new hairstyle that very few artists can make look good, to the often very masculine proportions she's given by various artists, to the Wolverine-esque hard push that has seen her being associated with the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, A-Force, S.W.O.R.D., The Ultimate, and Alpha Flight in just a few years. She's also gone through three, soon to 
to be four separate series of Captain Marvel since 2012, along with numerous other titles with similar names, which could come down to Marvel's sudden DC-like constant relaunches, but it could also be a sign of fan dissatisfaction with Modern Carol and the state of Marvel's current political climate. If the fact that Civil War 2 concluded with Carol, a character Marvel needed to get over with fans before her then upcoming movie, beating Iron Man, the face of the MCU, into a fucking coma isn't enough to tell you that Marvel has a real problem with their handling of Carol since the title change, then I don't know what is. The one ray of hope during this is the introduction of the fourth Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan. Despite what's happened with Carol, her current successor remains fairly popular. She's a Muslim teenage superhero fangirl of Pakistani descent who has to deal with rather traditional parents, normal teen drama, and awakening her inhuman powers to take on the former mantle of her favourite superhero, which gets her embroiled in all of the Inhumans' major events and brings her into conflict with her idol over their views during Civil War II. Kamala has a lot going for her, and though I can't speak for how well all of this has been handled, it's a shame to see Carol's fanbase dwindling and going off what I've heard, dragging Kamala's down with it. And throughout all this, Billy Batson remains largely the same. He's gone through character progression by succeeding Shazam for a few years after Infinite Crisis, and even changing his name to Shazam in the New 52, but Billy is still a character people can enjoy and even get excited for when he gets his own big budget movie, even in light of the flaccid attempts at taping Marvel's success from DC films that we've had to suffer through in recent years. I like Carol. I was a big fan of her mid alt solo books, so it's just genuinely painful to see Marvel drag her name through the mud with their modern comics that do nothing to endear her to longtime fans or most newcomers. This is, of course, not helped by an only average, overly politicised movie outing that starred a woman that cannot keep her fucking mouth shut. Hell, I think the best thing anyone's done for Carol in a decade is Capcom having her and Dante defeat Ultron Sigma, and considering what game that was in, that isn't saying much. I think the issue is that Marvel wants Carol to be a sort of female equivalent to Captain America, and so they're Roman reigning her to much the same result as that term's namesake. And this affects Kamala as well, but to a lesser extent. They are pushing her too hard, too fast, and it's doing nothing but making fans push back. Meanwhile, the only push Billy gets is from terrible alternate universe stories into a fucking grave. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they too can star in an SJW cuckfest that pisses off whiny man babies. I think that covers all the bases. Oh, and there was also that one character Marvel Man, but nobody cares.